So this week we are going to be finishing chapter nine, which is the final chapter we're going to do under the medium run analysis. And what we will be doing in this chapter is, I mean, you can tell it from the title of the chapter, the ISL and PC model. So what we will be doing in this chapter is putting everything together so far. So a brief review, we started our analog of this course with chapter three, four, and five, which were the short run analysis chapter, where we basically took a look at the goods and the financial market. And we saw how in the short run, output is determined by demand. Then we started the medium run analysis. Uh, we didn't do chapter six, uh, we've just done three, four, and five. Uh, then we moved on to chapter seven and eight, where so far we've looked at uh, how unemployment affects inflation. So in chapter seven, we looked at uh, basically how unemployment and other factors in the economy helps us uh, or helps us determine the wage level in the uh, in the economy. So we looked at the uh, the price setting relation and the wage setting relation. Now, that was also the first time when we introduced price into our model, which we had not done in chapter three, four, and five, since we're assuming that in the short run, price is fixed. And then in the previous chapter, chapter eight, what we did was we uh, derived the Phillips curve, which basically the original Phillips curve tells us the relationship between unemployment and uh, inflation but we saw that there is a better way of characterizing this relationship and we derived the modified Phillips curve uh, which effectively tells us the relationship between change in inflation and uh, and unemployment so we're going to put these two together uh, so before we put these two together uh, let, let, let's start with uh, the the goods market. So we remember that in the goods market, we had Y equals to consumption, which is a function of income minus tax, so basically disposable income, plus investment, which is a function of income and interest rate, so we're going to call that R, and G is exogenous and what is important for you guys to remember that y y i these are endogenous variables so we calculate them from the model and t and g are exogenous variables which means we do not calculate them from the model we take their values as given and Using this and uh, uh, the relationship in the financial model, we were able to derive the ISLM relationship, which should be pretty, uh, pretty clear to all of you. What we basically saw was that if, for example, interest rate was falling, what that will lead to is an increase in investment in the economy. Uh, as investment went up, demand for goods would go up. So Z would go up. And if Z went up, output would go up. So this was the relationship that we found in chapter three, four, and five. The relationship between the financial market, where let's say we have interest rate, and the goods market, where we have output. And if we were to draw a diagram of this relationship, what we would basically see is this. So we have Y here. Suppose we have R here. And this is the I's curve. And this is the LM curve. And so this is the interest rate in the economy. And therefore, this is the equilibrium level of output. And of course, we've seen how different government policies 
such as fiscal policy, which has mostly to do with uh, government expenditure and revenue, so taxations and such, uh, will shift the highest curve. And the central bank's decision about interest rate will shift the LM curve, uh, which is the monetary policy. And the government uses both fiscal policy and monetary policy, sometimes just one, sometimes both together to achieve various economic agendas. We've also seen some examples of specific problems that the economy may be facing and how the government may fix those problems using fiscal and monetary policy. Okay, so this was the short run bit, chapter three, four, five. Now let's review what we have looked just in the previous chapter with Phillips curve. So what we know about the Phillips curve, what you've seen is that it is inflation minus expectation of inflation is equal to negative alpha U minus the natural rate of unemployment. It's the simplified version of the Phillips curve that we've seen in the next chapter. And so if, if the, what this relationship tells us is that uh, two things. If the unemployment rate in the economy is less than the natural rate of unemployment. So fewer people, uh, more people have jobs than would be the, the, the natural state. What we would have is that inflation in the economy is higher than the expected inflation. And just the converse, if the unemployment is higher than the natural rate of unemployment, then what we have is that inflation is less than the expected inflation. So this is effectively the findings of the Phillips curve. And just as a review, in case you guys don't remember, this is the natural rate of unemployment so do not be mistaken about the term natural okay so because just because this is called natural doesn't mean that it's, it's sort of like an equilibrium or something like that nothing like that all that this tells us is that this is the rate of unemployment where inflation is equal to expected inflation. That's really it. So effectively what we're saying is that if the unemployment in the economy is equal to the natural rate of unemployment, then the predictions we make about inflation will be correct. So then I suppose I might as well add a third point that if unemployment is equal to the natural unemployment, then inflation is equal to the expected inflation. And so this is what we had seen in the, uh, in the last chapter. So what we want to do is we want to combine these two, okay? So we want to take this from the short run and we want to take this from the mid run and we want to combine them. So to combine them, notice that this is given in terms of uh, output. But over here we do not have output, we have inflation and unemployment. So that's the first thing we need to do and that's what we will be doing in the next video is convert the Phillips curve in terms of output instead of in terms of unemployment.